What's going on, Shoe Fanatics? Welcome back to the channel. I set a goal for myself this year that when I crossed 2,023 subscribers, I was gonna go ahead and do a sneaker collection video. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because it's been about three years and I figured it was about time for you guys to see what goes down in the sneaker room. So before we get into it, here's a spoiler warning. I got a bunch of general releases. I got a bunch of GRs, the same kind of stuff I assume you guys have. A lot of big YouTubers put up these captions with this bug eyes and they say, my insane $200,000 collection. And yeah, I mean, some of that's true, right? But for the vast majority of you, this is probably what your sneaker collection is gonna look like. And to be honest, it doesn't take a lot of money. It doesn't take a lot of PEs. It doesn't take a lot of collabs to have a good collection, at least in my opinion. So without further ado, the Everyman's channel presents to you the Everyman's collection. First and foremost, we have the Air Jordan 1 Heritage, and I know what this looks like. But believe me when I say these are the Air Jordan 1 Heritage that came out, I believe, last year or so. There was a frenzy about these because they were kind of a basic plain shoe, but they were a great customizer shoe. I mean, and what everybody else did, just like I did, was make Chicago colorways out of them. Of course, you have the black toes with the red lace, one of my favorite beater pairs, and the uh, classic iconic colorway, not the shoe itself. You also have a bread colorway. Again, these colors I'm showing you, I do not have the original OG uh, shoe of it, so. Here you go, custom, custom, custom. And lastly, the Chicago colorway. Our great friend and customizer, Juan Wilson, did these. I mean, he spent a lot of time, blood, sweat, and tears putting this together. Uh, he actually numbered these pairs, and I actually have pair 15 out of 21. So 21 of these, of these in existence, and uh, man, thank you, Juan, so much. Next up, the Air Jordan 1 origin story, the Spider-Man, the Spider-Man 1.0. I really want to get the 2.0s that just dropped on a shock drop, but for now, we have, a, you know, the original OG, actual, authentic uh, Spider-Man 1.0s. Love them, love them, love them. I mean, not much to say about them. Yet another Chicago colorway. I picked this one up, I believe, in November it was when these came out 2022. The Air Jordan 1, Lost and Found. This shoe has been driving the internet crazy because of how hard it is to get. Not because there's not a lot of quantity of it, it's just because the release methods are kind of crappy. I happened to hit on an early access. This was the one where you had to take 20 L's over the last, like, two years on Jordan 1s. And listen, I'm that guy, the Everyman's channel. So I had access, copped, and now I don't got to worry about all the craziness. Next up, the women's Air Jordan 1 Shattered Backboard 3.0 Lux. This is the Birkin bag joint, right? The one with the good leather, a nice feel to it. I mean, very solid shoe. Uh, got my wares out of this already. Great quality. I said it before, I'll say it again. The women's division at Jordan brand is killing it. This is a great, great shoe. Love it. The Air Jordan 1 Men's Shattered Backboard 3.0. This is one of those ones where I knew I had to have it when I saw it. You know, I remember people were saying this looks like a, a, a glossy trash bag and all kinds of stuff, but slowly they grew into the community and I've had this one since day one. I'm thankful to have it. Um, looking forward to all the Shattered Backboard releases in the future. Next up, we have the Air Jordan 1 Pollen. You guys remember this shoe was inspired by the uh, Pollens that came out, I think the Dunk Pollens maybe back in 1985. Also that Dunk had the Wu-Tang joint on it, but um, man, great shoe. Love this color of yellow, the uh, you know bread kind of color blocking. Fantastic shoe, man. Next up, we have the Air Jordan 1 Taxi. And I thought this one was going to be really hard to get because of the bread color blocking. Bread with the color in the actual toe, but the toe cap is black. But you know what, man? People seem to be starting to get cool on the Air Jordan 1. This was one of those ones that was a litmus test. Like, if this one, you know, it kind of sold out, but it's not doing crazy, crazy numbers. So, at the end of the day, I'm thankful I got them. Great colorway. And uh, hopefully, these guys make a return, or at least easy to cop on the aftermarket if you want them. Air Jordan 1 Volt Gold, one of those ones that's a sleeper for sure. I mean, it's not everybody's cup of tea. This thing is bright around the collar. And you know what I mean? This Captain Tape kind of thing here. Uh, I mean, I like it, man. Nice matte leather, pretty good. I don't know how my joint got so scuffed up and dirty. Hopefully the camera picks that up. But listen, man, I wear my shoes. So there you go. Air Jordan 1 Volt Gold. Speaking of bright, it's the Air Jordan 1 Volt. I mean, this was another one of those ones that's, you know, I think is a bit of a sleeper. I think I wore this joint one time someplace and. Like, no one said anything about it. I didn't get any compliments or stares. It just happened to be what it was. But I really do like this shoe. I mean, I think it's kind of underrated, but I get it. It's 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 not for the faint of heart. So, I mean, take that with a grain of salt. A great shoe, the Air Jordan 1 Women's Lucky Green. The first Lucky Green that we got. And this one, man, is really nice. I mean, the leather and the quality of the shoe is unmatched. I mean, I hear shattered backboard this, shattered backboard that, but this one's pretty damn good. Also commemorates the rivalry between the Boston Celtics and the Chicago Bulls. Air Jordan 1 Lucky Green, man. Like I said, the women's division, Jordan brand. I mean, they, they be killing stuff, man. Another one of those colorways that I thought would have sold out, but we got this Air Jordan 1 Lucky Green that just recently came out. I love this shoe. Think it's a great color green. The materials are just kind of okay on it, but it's your standard run-of-the-mill Air Jordan 1. You can't ask for too much more than that. Air Jordan 1 Hyper Royal. I mean, this is one of those ones that 
kind of skyrocketed in price and i don't really know why maybe it's because of the hype of the turbo green or at least the price of the turbo green one which i don't have but this is a nice colorway it's got that wash effect to it it's really nice man it's kind of set the standard for all these washed colorways going forward and now we got the tiktok shoe why am i calling it the tiktok shoe because this shoe was hovering around a certain price on the aftermarket the next thing i know i looked up and this shoe was like 500 bucks it's great the UNC Obsidian colorway. I mean, it's very nice. Materials are pretty plush on it, pretty soft, but I cannot for the life of me tell you why people covet this shoe so, so much. Like it's a collab or some kind of a you know, uh, rare pair. But listen, man, it's a nice shoe on its own. I'm glad to have it. I actually doubled up on it and I gave it one of my homeboys. So listen, man, um, don't break the bank for this shoe. It's really, really nice. Other than that, your guess is as good as mine about why this shoe is taken off like it did. Jordan 1, University Blue. This is another one of those shoes that took off like during the pandemic. I mean, it kind of, it's a nice shoe, like materials on it, pretty nice. So University of Blue is beautiful. But you know, when influencers and TikTokers get to the shoe, they become hard to cop. But this one I actually acquired during a trade from the Trade Block app. So I'm thankful to have this one. Can't remember what I gave up for it, but it wasn't too, too much. But uh, hey, I'm happy to have it. And here we go, University Blue Jordan 1. I believe this shoe was the first shoe to release in 2020. It's the Air Jordan 1 Women's UNC to Chicago. Another great shoe, great materials. Chicago, UNC, the history is all there. I mean, what more do you need to say about it? There is a Jordan 1 Women's Low coming out with this same color blocking. I think I'm gonna skip that one because I don't need too many Jordan Lows. I'm not really a fan of Jordan Lows like that, but UNC Chicago, there you go. And then it was the men's turn, UNC to Chicago, this time in a patent leather wrap. I actually really, really like this shoe. I know a lot of people were cool on the UNC and the patent, but I mean, here we go, man. This is one of those ones where, again, glad to have it. Part of the Fearless pack. I think there's fear written on the inside. Got that jewel, that bubble, uh, Ball and Wings logo. But man, I, I really, really like this shoe. This one, I got a lot of wears as it was one of my first in my collection. So, you know, definitely some creasing in there, but great shoe overall. Another one of those grab and go shoes, the Air Jordan 1 Hyper Royal, AKA the He Got Games. Now, this was the first Hyper Royal, not the the wash one you guys saw earlier. This one is inspired by Lincoln High School. That's in uh, Spike Lee's uh, movie, He Got Game. Lincoln High School was the high school that Jesus Shuttlesworth went to. And this is the appropriate shoe that goes with that kind of theme. And the material on this is super soft, super buttery. I mean, I don't know what the shoe's worth now. I mean, it doesn't really matter. But this one sat for a long, long time. I'm actually able to, I'm glad to have this one. This was this was really nice. I, I like this shoe a whole lot. Air Jordan 1, Dark Marina Blue. I remember when this one first came out, this is one of those ones that really sat for a long time. And it really started to kind of mark the decline of the popularity, at least the overall aftermarket popularity of the Air Jordan 1. It's a good, solid colorway. Listen, I buy what I like and I wear what I like. I don't really give a damn about aftermarket prices. Just interesting to see how the market dictates how good a shoe is based on aftermarket price. Weird thing. Air Jordan 1 Tokyo Co. Japan in the Midnight Navy colorway. One of those ones where it's a beautiful material. It came with some rope laces, but I love this blue suede. I threw this red lace in here because I was supporting my team, the Giants at the time. I think it's a good contrast. I mean, not much to say about this one. The silver spoosh, jewel logo, you know what it is. Air Jordan 1 High 85 OG in a Georgetown colorway. This was a must cop for me. I'm glad I got this one. I can't remember when these released. But I mean, it's got that stiff, real leather. I mean, it's kind of mimicking the way the 85s felt when they first came out. Shape, everything, man, great. Do a uh, vintage cream lace in there because it's an 85 colorway. But man, really, really, really love these. Air Jordan 1 Court Purple. I love this colorway. I love the Chicago color blocking. I remember the first time I saw this one, I didn't realize it had a leather tag on it. But man, this is one of my favorite ones with the black lace in it. Got a couple of wears out of these already. But uh, yeah, man, glad to have that one. It's actually the Court Purple 2.0. My most recent pickup, the Air Jordan 1 Women's Wash Pink. Again, I mentioned to you about the Hyper Royals, that kind of wash colorway. Very cool, very wearable for that sale uh, midsole with the white and the pink, the wash pink colorway. Atmosphere is actually the name of it. So uh, really nice, man. Air Jordan 1 Wash Pink. This used to be the Air Jordan 1 Crimson Tint, but I did a little custom to it. This was all black before, so I went ahead and decided to paint the swoosh black and give that kind of black toe, excuse me, the bread toe color blocking white here. I got a lot of wears out of this. I'm hoping the camera's gonna pick up how much, you know, beat is going on with this. But I, I really like this shoe, like a lot, like a whole lot. Released as a three pack, we got the Air Jordan 1 Guava Ice. It came in two other colorways. I think it was like a red one and like a green one. But this one was on sale, outlet pickup for like 63 bucks. First start of my collection, this was a great one to have. And I mean, like, again, these kind of pinks are kind of wearable just because they're very neutral. I'm in Florida, hot, you know, kind of climate. Pinks are always gonna be a go. Air Jordan 1 Guava Ice. 
Air Jordan 1, I'm um, um, year. I mean, it goes without saying, I love the entire I'm um, um, in year line. They gave us this cracked leather, gave us this nice little burgundy, um, you know, material on it. Fantastic shoes, a lot of symbolism, a lot of meaning behind these shoes. We had to have this one. This is the Air Jordan 1 I'm um, um, in year. James Whitner and I'm um, um, in year group knocked this one out of the park. Next up, we got a classic, classic, classic. And I mean that not in a literal sense of the word, but just in how nice these shoes are. These are the Air Jordan 1 Rookie of the Year. This obviously commemorates Jordan winning the Rookie of the Year, as well as his Rookie of the Year coat that he had on at his acceptance speech. Great material all around. Got like the little flyaways here. It actually does have a red lace with it, which also looks equally hard. And I mean, this kind of uh, wheat colorway, great, man. Just fantastic. Next up we have from what I can remember is a first neighborhood release, and that's the Air Jordan 1 Heirloom. Now, this one is pretty unique because it has that Bachetta tan, and that Bachetta tan over time will actually kind of like patina and change into a different kind of, you know, different kind of colorway, almost like metal tarnishing, like if it was a, a heirloom or a trophy kind of tarnishes. After that, you had this kind of cool corduroy or denim material. Pretty nice shoe, came with some different color laces, but overall, very, very nice. Another TikTok shoe. I mean, at first people were calling this the poor man's Travis Scott, and now people can't get enough of it. The Air Jordan 1 Dark Mocha. This is one of those ones that when I saw it again, I fell in love with it. I knew I had to have it. But again, poor man's kept coming up and people were kind of cool on it. Now, $500. Do with that information as you will. Next, you have the Air Jordan 1 Tokyo Biohack. Colors are all over the place. I mean, it's kind of out of this world. It's got these uh, kind of neon, you know, futuristic vibes to it. But I'm digging it. A couple of extra laces that make this thing pop. You know, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I do like it. This is one of those ones I do like a lot. I already knew I wanted to have it like as soon as I saw it. The Air Jordan 1 Crafted. This is one of those ones too. I make a lot of wear out of it. Hopefully you guys have seen a little dirt. You guys know, like I said, I rock my stock. Did a lace swap on it with this like a little coffee color lace. And man, this is one of those ones that can you can dress it up, dress it down. Great shoe. Some people don't like that patch. Some people don't like this kind of, you know, reflective 3M here, but I'm a fan of it. I'm just a fan. Here we are again with that silver swoosh and that bubble logo. We got the Air Jordan 1 Bordeaux. I mean, just a solid Bordeaux colorway in the Chicago color blocking. I have certain shoes just for certain looks, and if I need a Bordeaux shoe, this one fits the bill. Nothing more, nothing less. Another one of my early pairs, I'm talking about like less than 10 pairs, outlet picked up the Air Jordan 1 Phantom Gym Red. Wrinkly, outline red everywhere. Not everybody's cup of tea, but damn, I do love this shoe. Also one of those ones I got a ton of wear out of. Again, women's division, always killing it. The Air Jordan 1 Women's Seafoam beautiful colorway in my big age i'm kind of into these neutrals and earth tones you know kind of things and this is the seafoam colorway is one of those ones like when the seashore runs up and the bubbles and all this stuff put you in that mind this is that shoe man i mean i, I love this shoe very solid materials very wearable air jordan one seafoam i mean in my mind i have come to call this the peter parkers and the reason why is because in spider-man no way home he actually wore these shoes with a black lace you'll thank me later but this is the air jordan one hyper crimson neutral gray colorway this is one of those shoes that after the jordan brand dropped the collab with union which had words i think somewhere around here they decided to go ahead and get on the boat and make their off brand their great value union shoes and this is one of those ones but i think it's very well executed this shoe actually looks like worn to hell i'm not sure why this shoe looks so dirty other than I wear it, but great shoe nonetheless. And speaking of Union Collab, this is one of those ones where Jordan Brand tried to do their in-house Union Collab again. They gave you a different colored um, collar here as opposed to the rest of the shoe, which is this short hair suede and that gray colorway. I went ahead and finished the job that they started and did a Union style lace job and um, pretty nice, man. I like it. It's the first SB Jordan Collab I was actually able to cop, the Air Jordan 1 Paris to NYC. Again, this is one of those shoes I get a lot of wear out of, but I cannot for the life of me go ahead and get that paint kind of scratched off. If you didn't know, underneath there, there's a pink and like a hot pink underneath the black. And if I'm trying to zoom in here. Maybe you'll see some hints of some color fading every now and then. But I mean, you got to like really skate this shoe to get this uh, paint off of here. But with time, we'll see. This was the other neighborhood release, the Air Jordan 1 Rebellionaire, based off of the band Bread 1 with a shadow color blocking and their logo all across it. I mean, I had a review somewhere on the channel. You can check that review for more in-depth um, you know, notes about it. But other than that, it's a shadow colorway solid shoe and a lot of people kind of poo-pooed it but i'm a fan of it this used to be the air jordan one stealth just like the heritage shoe this one was a pretty blank canvas i mean it had a lot of white to it what i went ahead and did was customize it there's an air jordan one low i believe that's a japan exclusive that's uh kind of the same kind of color blocking and when official images of that shoe rolled out i knew i wanted to take this shoe and kind of make it a custom so i did exposed uh tongue up here vintage lace and the unc color blocking around the toe so something a little different the other part of that tokyo pack the air jordan one cold japan in the silver colorway i mean this shoe came out in 2001 i believe the special editions had like a silver briefcase to go along with it this one not so much a nice silver box silver swoosh pretty decent materials 
you know, part of the collection for sure to go along with his cousins, the Biohack and the Midnight Navy. The Air Jordan 1 Silver Toes, another women's exclusive. I think it's really nice, man. It's one of those ones you can kind of dress it up, dress it down, depending on where you're going. I mean, like a lot of places I go kind of need a little more casual or street casual kind of feel. And this silver actually pops, especially in the nighttime. Definitely a nice shoe and a keeper for the entire collection. The Air Jordan 1 Gym Red. When I say beater, I mean beater. Reverse Chicago color blocking. Think about it, reverse Chicago color blocking. Sale midsole, just for my own, you know, enjoyment. I went ahead and did a union style lace, but beater is definitely the word for this shoe. Love it, easy to slip on and go, beater. Another high 85 OG release, the Air Jordan 1 Panda. Stop that. The Air Jordan 1 black and white. I understand the correlation. I understand that the popular Panda pandemic that's happening right now. Guys, this is a black and white high OG 85. Please and thank you. Next up, we have two of the five Travis Scott lows. I mean, it's a whole thing about the whole Travis Scott collapse. Check my channel for all the reviews. You got the Air Jordan 1 Travis Scott low in the reverse mocha colorway and the Air Jordan 1 low women's exclusive in the olive colorway. Two fire fire shoes. Guys, if they're unlaced, it means I just hadn't got a chance to wear them. It came out like two weeks ago. Cut me some slack. They will get worn, but two great shoes. Two of those shoes that's kind of like high in value for the collab reason. Happy to have both of these though for retail. I mean, that's the most important part. And both from the sneakers app, actually. I mean, it's pretty lucky. The shoe that single-handedly made me a believer in Air Jordan 2's, the Alma Meniere. Again, one of those ones I think was perfectly executed by the brand. Puts on the inside, very nice shoe. Of course, the original, the OG Chicago 2, man. I have an agenda, I have a mission to complete an OG set from one to 14. Can't leave this shoe out. Definitely is a part of the whole click, the staple. But at the end of the day too, I actually do like wearing this shoe. Got a couple wears out of it, as you guys see. Air Jordan 2 Chicago, man, one of those ones. Took me completely by surprise how good this shoe is. The Air Jordan 2 Low Shelf Life. South African based designer who collabed with Jordan, the first collab with the African continent. And man, very wearable. Again, I'm in my neutral bag right now. So it's got this cream beige colorway, nice little safety orange on it. Very nice shoe, shelf life. You did a great job. The next one in the Reimagine series to accompany its two siblings, the Air Jordan 1 Lost and Found and the Air Jordan 1 Patent Bread, we have the Air Jordan Reimagine 3. So Jordan 3 white cement with some vintage here, some vintage here, and that's pretty much it. But still a staple, Air Jordan 3 OG colorway released in 1988, you cannot beat it. A lot of people's favorite colorway in the Air Jordan 3 is the Air Jordan 3 Cardinal. I mean, we had this colorway based off the Air Jordan 7 Cardinal, which people apparently didn't really like, but that's a whole other story. Air Jordan logo on the back, Cardinal colorway on the front, pretty nice leather, Air Jordan Cardinal. I mean, what else can you say about it? Return of an OG, the Air Jordan 3 Fire Red, classic colorway. I believe I got this shoe on an early pickup some kind of way. I don't remember exactly how, but man, classic colorway, Air Jordan 3, one of the four original colorways of release, and here we are again. My most recent pickup, the Air Jordan 3 Wizards PE. Fantastic shoe, great colorway. It is in the PE, guys. I mean, Jordan wore this shoe on the court, Jordan Air and everything, all right? I mean, take that with a grain of salt if you dare, but this is one of those ones. Very nice shoe, classic with that true blue scheme, except of the red accents, you have copper color accents, again, with that Jordan Wizards Days colorway. So, very nice shoe, elephant print is great. QC, QA on it is very nice. Do yourself a favor, pick this one up. Another OG in the Jordan 4 silhouette, the Air Jordan 4 Fire Red. I mean, great shoe, fantastic, classic, iconic. I'm gonna say this probably 10 more times for these OG colorways. A must have in my opinion. Nike Air on the back. A lot of good stuff got done in this uh, shoe. I mean, this is 1989 at this point. This is young MJ dropping buckets. What else can you do with it? This is one of those shoes that when I first saw mock-ups of it, I don't think I was entirely sold on the idea. When I got these guys in hand, man, my attitude changed quick. The Air Jordan 4 PSG, one of the best shoes to release, I believe, in the year 2020. I was on it before the hype of the Jordan 4 kind of skyrocketed, and I knew this shoe was going to be special when I got it in hand. Materials, color, the uh, PSG kind of insignia and collab. Man, this one is nice. I really, really am digging this shoe, like, a ton. The Air Jordan 4 Military Black. This is one of those ones that's built off of an OG colorway, of course, being a military blue. And I believe the military blue is coming out next year with the Nike Air in the back and the whole shebang. But right now, Clean, smooth, easy to rock colorway. Black, white, I mean gray. What else do you need for an easily wearable Jordan 4? The Air Jordan 4 SB, and my man, my guy made me promise to not say his name on the camera, but he did retail oot me for these. I mean, this guy got all the raffles in. He hit at two or three different skate shops, and I got the retail oot, man. So you know who you are, man. 
definitely appreciate you, Mr. All Love, my guy. This is an SB collapse, so that means thicker tongue. Gum saw on the bottom for more uh, grabbing of the board and all that kind of good stuff. Thicker padding on the inside. Man, this is a very nice shoe, but beyond that, the colorway. I mean, this off-white colorway with this nice pine green accents with this red on the tongue. Gum bottom at the sole and, in the, and the heel. Great shoe. Fantastic, man. I didn't even get a chance to review this shoe because I was so busy at the time of the release. Maybe I'll go back and do it if you guys wanted enough. Let me know down in the comments. Other than that, man, great, great shoe. This shoe is one of those ones I like to call a Gentry special. Gentry Humphrey was one of those uh, executives at Nike. And he had a lot of ideas for those colorways. And these and some other ones I'm going to show you down later on are uh, part of his brainchild. When he was leaving the brand, Jordan decided to have his swan song and re-release some of his favorite shoes from his kind of tenure there at Nike. And this is one of those ones, the Air Jordan 4 Lightning, with this all, I think, tour yellow colorway. I mean, it's brash, it's loud, it's bold. It's, it's one of those ones, though. As sure as the sun will rise in the morning, you have a UNC colorway on a Jordan 4. This is one of those ones that's part of the collegiate pack, but you can see it signified by the tag. But man, you got an Air Jordan 4 wrapped in a nice suede in a UNC colorway. I swapped the laces to black for some contrast, and I do enjoy wearing this shoe, uh, I mean, a lot. Another release from Ama Manier, the Ama Manier Jordan 4. I believe it's like an or colorway or a violet or, I think it's a colorway. Man, these are nice, but they are painful i mean painful is a little bit too strong of a word but they have a quilted insole on the inside of it not the best for wearing but definitely looks nice and i'm, I'm digging it i mean the whole violet ore with the um sail colorway black hits like the little thing here i forget what it's called sue me i don't remember nike air on the back nice shoe beautiful execution except the insole all the hype is on jordan fours right now but this one kind of flew under the radar i was easily able to obtain this from the sneakers app but when you get the shoe in hand did a little lace swap to it. I love the shoe. Again, I'm in my neutral bag. Gray, gray, sail, gray, wash yellow, whatever this colorway is. A Jordan 4, nice and easy to wear. Can't get better than that. I think this is actually another Gentry special, the Air Jordan 4 Cool Gray. Cool Gray, gray accents, gray, black, silver. I mean, fantastic. All the hype on Jordan 4s is hard to call something a sleeper, but this black canvas, man, this was probably by far one of the most comfortable Jordan 4s I have put on. And I wore this shoe for like a, a long time and I felt, felt like I was on a cloud for some strange reason. I don't know the padding to be any different or any reason why. Maybe it's because the canvas on the shoe is a little bit more forgiving. But man, solid black, easy to wear, easy to pick up and go with. It can blend in with anything. I mean, it's not the black cat, but Air Jordan 4 black canvas. I'm going to take a little minute to talk about these. This is the one that started all of this. May 2019, my first W on the speakers app. I mean, besides it being a classic, iconic, game-winning shot <laughs> uh, colorway, hitting on a sneakers app is what activated that dopamine, that kind of rush to win shoes from sneakers app. And I actually hit the shoe twice on two different accounts at that time. Nike knows the psychological advantage they have with the sneakers app and what they're doing. And man, I mean, they got me hooked from then on. But besides all that, again, the Air Jordan 4 black cement, the bread, the colorway, the shot over ELO, 1989's finest. This is the one that started it all for me. I owe it all to this. Next up, we have what I believe is another Gentry special, the Air Jordan 5 Toro Bravo, the Raging Bull, man. This is one of those ones, again, it's a staple. I knew how popular the shoe was. I had heard about it as I was getting into collecting. And when the shoe re-released, I just knew I had to scoop it up. I know a lot of purists are talking about how the shoe is not as quite vibrant and has as much deep red suede as the actual release in 2006, the two pack. You guys got to quote me on that. But yeah, man, we got the return of the Toro Bravo, the Raging Bull. Happy to have it. Fantastic shoe. Gonna hit y'all with a two for one. We got the DJ Khaled pack. I mean, there was four in total, but here we have the Crimson Bliss, I believe. And I believe it's also the Sale. I mean, I can't remember. Guys, I got a lot of shoes, as you can see. I kind of remember all the names, but the DJ Khaled pack, man. Something special about these particular Jordan 5s. They have no ankle bolster here. They have quilted insoles on the inside of them. And I got these funky colorways. Two other ones were a blue and a purple, I believe. Of the two, I think the Sale is my favorite colorway. Again, neutral bag. You know, it's easily wearable, a lot more than this pink, but hopefully you guys can see I got a good, as you can see, I got a lot of use out of the Crimson Bliss ones. And I think I wore these maybe once or twice. Air Jordan 5 Jade Horizon, one of those ones, again, that kind of neutral list, you know, earth tone colorway. Pre-age midsole, kind of pre-age netting, and as well as the eye holes. I did a white lace swap just so it's not like super pre-age, but even the pre-age uh, lace lock and Dubray, very nice, very easy to wear. One of my favorite shoes. And once again, a UNC colorway on an Air Jordan 5. 
lace swap here with the uh, white lace kind of patterns itself after the Air Jordan 5 UNC PE version. Of course, this is the collegiate pack, so we had the collegiate patch on the back and a uh, reflective uh, tongue here. I mean, it's a, it's a UNC colorway. I do like this shoe a whole lot, and actually, I haven't worn it yet. I have not worn this shoe yet, but I'll make my point to get it on my feet this week. Look at my Instagram, pictures going up. I don't know, May 2020, I think, Air Jordan 5 Fire Red. I also think I got this on an early access or a shock drop, can't remember, but classic iconic colorway. The Jordan 5 is kind of forgotten a lot. It's sandwiched between the Air Jordan 4, which is like people's favorite silhouette, and then also the Air Jordan 6, which is his championship silhouette, which, you know, go, it holds a lot of weight. So the Air Jordan 5 kind of gets lost in the shuffle. And again, I understand the shape of it. it doesn't maybe get these people's attention, but, but I love it. And again, one of those ones I had to have, not just for the collection, because I'm trying to get all the OGs, but for the white, red, and black colorway, easy to wear. The Air Jordan 6 Wheat, I think I picked this shoe up for like 80 bucks back in the day. Uh, very nice, very easy to put on. When I first picked this shoe up, I didn't know how browns were gonna factor into my wardrobe, but they play a heavy, heavy role now. It's kind of got that Timberland boot brown a little bit, but more than that, the materials. Hopefully the camera will pick up how much motion is in this suede. A very nice crafted shoe. Nice little 1991 on the back, commemorating the year the shoe came out. Man, fantastic. Another two part special. Air Jordan 6, Travis Scott in the olive colorway and a British khaki colorway. Both very fantastic shoes. Full disclosure, first shoe I ever paid resale for, $650. That was like back in 2020 or 2019 maybe, again, foggy. But this one I actually got on retail from the sneakers app. My wife's account actually hit it for me. I love the pocket on this one as well as the pocket on the other side, which is devoid of uh, on the olive green. In addition to that, both these have glow in the dark soles. But the glow in the dark on this particular pair is, I mean, is really bright. As you can see, there's no black uh, on this one like there is on this one. So this whole thing glows in the dark. Really, really nice. The Air Jordan 6 wash denim. Listen, I get it. I know it's a brick. I hear you loud and clear. It's a brick when I bought it. It's still a brick now. But you know what? That's good for me because I love to wear this shoe. This shoe goes great with a lot of things like camo pants or like maybe some khaki colored pants. I actually did a little bit of a custom to it. As you guys know, Jordan 4 has Levi's uh, collab that they put together. So I made this one a Levi collab. I have a Levi uh, little tag here that's uh, kind of stitched into this part here, as well as a Levi hang tag. This is something I put together and a red lace. I mean, I like the shoe. People don't wear this shoe. You don't see this shoe out often. That's kind of why I think I like it even more. Another two-parter, two original colorways from 1991. Air Jordan Sport Blue, Air Jordan 6, White Infrared. Again, both of these were original colorways back in 1991. Both of these though, unfortunately, had the Jumpman Air on the back, and I'm hoping and praying for a Reed Retro with the Nike Air on the back, just like they had in 1991. A solid white base shoes with the respective uh, White Infrared colorway, as well as a Sport Blue. Our good brother, Juan Wilson, makes a return to the channel again with this custom he did for me. This used to be an Air Jordan 6 Midnight Navy. I put up a couple of mock-ups and want to make a Georgetown kind of home colorway. So he went ahead and he made this and sent this to me. So thank you so much, Juan. This is a custom of an Air Jordan 6 Midnight Navy into an Air Jordan 6 Georgetown home colorway. Speaking of Georgetown, you have the Air Jordan 6 Georgetown. And this is one of those ones I knew I had to have this one too. Great suede material on it. Very, very nice. I'm thankful to have this one. I did a couple of lace swap options on it, but ultimately decided to keep the gray lace that came stock in it on inside of it. And man, here we go. Love this shoe. Great neutral colorway. Very, very nice. We're back again with another UNC colorway, the Air Jordan 6 University Blue. Collegiate pack based off of a UNC 6 PE. Collegiate pack on the back. I think the interesting thing about this was it either went for exclusive access or a shock drop. And whenever a shock drop or had exclusive access, once that one was gone, I think that was it. Like there was no more sneakers app drops on this shoe. I'm not sure how many of these went to brick and mortar stores, if any, but it was a really weird release if I recall right. An original colorway for sure, the Air Jordan 6 Carmine, one of my favorite releases. I don't know how else to quantify how much I love, love, love this shoe. Nike Air on the back, 1991 OG release, Air Jordan 6 Carmine, man. That's all I can say about it. Beautiful, beautiful, iconic. Y'all know the deal. Another one in the PSG lineup. I was early adopted with this one too. The Air Jordan 6 PSG. Iron gray or slate gray, something like that with these black hits with the uh, Paris Saint Germain logo on the back. Really nice, man. Got this infrared hits. I think that's what kind of does it for me is the infrared hits on the iron gray um, colorway, man. Very nice shoe, great materials, great history with the PSG and all that other stuff with the collab. Man, it's a nice shoe. Love it, love it, love it. Strong consideration, careful consideration for one of my favorite shoes of all time, full stop, the Air Jordan 6 Black Infrared. I mean, Mike did work in this shoe, won a championship in this shoe. The colorway on this one is fantastic. 
They got the infrared right on this release. Nike Air on the back. I mean, say less, man. The Air Jordan 6 Black Infrared, you already know. Based off of that same Black Infrared I just showed you, we have the DMP Jordan 6, a 2020, I believe, Jordan 6 DMP, Defining Moments Pack. Great shoe. I love the Jordan 6 Silhouette. I love the Jordan 6 Black Infrared. I love the black hits. I love the gold accents commemorating all of his championship and defining moments in his career. And listen, we got a DMP 11 because this shoe came out in a pack, I think in 2006. It was an 11 and it was a six. His first championship of his first three-peat, his first championship of his second three-peat. That one's coming out in December. Needless to say, I gotta have that shoe. DMP Jordan 6. The Jordan 6 Black University Blue. Love this shoe again. I mean, the suede material, the blue just pops on that black background amazing amazing shoe i got this shoe for a trade too and i can't quite remember what i gave up for i think i doubled up on something and i traded this shoe straight out i mean i'm thankful i had this one it's very nice i got a couple of wears out of it already this was a uh, ds when i got it but it's not ds anymore man fantastic amazing shoe everyone's favorite shoe to not talk about man the air jordan 7 cardinal i mean he won a championship in this shoe uh this was a shoe that you know he went during his uh olympic season of course we do have the olympic sevens but Mr. Air Jordan 7, it's a championship shoe. Nice little Cardinal hints on the back, Cardinal on the jump, man. This is one of the ones where I think actually there's no more Nike branding on the shoe. I think this was the first time there's no Nike branding on the shoe. He went to his own uh, Jumpman logo all over the shoe. So, I mean, there's some history behind this shoe. Again, I had to have this classic, iconic OG colorway to fit with the rest of the theme, rest of the collection. And uh, hey, man, here it is, Air Jordan 7 Cardinal. We have the infamous Air Jordan 7 Trophy Room. Now, if you guys don't know, the Trophy Room is located here in Orlando, Florida. And with this particular release, this particular release, they show the community a lot of love. I mean, almost everyone who signed up for the in-store raffle hit. I mean, I saw a ton of W's on these. There was a ton of W's online, which is so far in contrast to the Trophy Room Air Jordan 1 that, I mean, the difference will make your head spin. But politics aside, with everything about Marcus Jordan and the guys that run the store, this is still a very nice shoe. I mean, it's the Jordan 7 Trophy Room, new sheriff in town beautiful materials great execution pays homage to the olympic games where uh the dream team played yeah i wore i wore i wore one time i did i wore this shoe one time i didn't think i went very far though but um i had the shoe on great shoe i love this one man very nice of course we got another og classic the air jordan 7 bordeaux i mean this is one of those ones that man it's such a nice shoe original colorway from 1992 this is one of those ones i think he wore on like the michael jackson video i think he wore this on the bugs bunny commercial when bugs bunny had the hairs on i think he had these on maybe i mean classic iconic this is the 2015 version which if i'm not mistaken is much closer to the original 1992 version than the one that came out in 2011 i think the 2011 version had like a lighter kind of midsole but this one man i'm just in awe of all these og colorways to be honest with you here we have one of my favorite pe's is the edge one seven ray allen Again, that good suede or new buck material with the uh, Milwaukee Bucks colorways on it, commemorating when Ray Allen, who was a Jordan Brand athlete, played for the team. Now, the actual PE, if I'm not mistaken, was actually a leather colorway and it potentially had his name maybe up here uh, written in script. But his name is on the inside of this shoe. Again, there's a review somewhere on my channel that has a whole full description of this shoe. But man, a great colorway, a great PE as it were. Great if you're a Milwaukee Bucks fan in general. Now we come to the part of my video where I'm the most sad. I'm incredibly disappointed to say that I have no Jordan 8s, no Jordan 9s, and no Jordan 10. But in my defense, Jordan Brand doesn't release a whole lot of Jordan 8, 9, and 10s, especially in desirable colorways, if we're being honest. There is a Jordan 8 playoff that I absolutely positively must have. But beyond that, I'm not sure what else. I mean, maybe a Jordan 9 Space Jam, again, to complete my OG collection. As far as Jordan 10s are concerned, I think it's actually been two years since they released a Jordan 10. The last Jordan 10 I remember was like those Woodland colorways that were pretty atrocious, if we're being honest. If Jordan wants to make money with the 10s. I mean, all I got to do is release the City Pack or like the Double Nickel or the Steel. I mean, it's very simple, Jordan Brand. Stop giving us these off-brand colorways of a Jordan 10 silhouette that people don't really care for in the first place. But moving on we have the air jordan 11 legend blue or the columbia i think this is actually a legend blue because they can't call it the columbia it's a beautiful shoe nice white patent leather which i'm actually looking forward to it aging the 2006 version that version has a lot of aging on the straps as well as some yellowing on the actual patent leather and man i'm kind of waiting for it to happen here back in the day though this also was a really crispy blue now not so much i want to say this shoe came out in december of 2018 and i mean it had the world in a frenzy and a chokehold probably the most wearable the most uh stylish as it were and i think jordan's favorite shoe the jordan 11 concord this is the tuxedo shoe this is the you can go here you can go there you can go everywhere in this particular shoe 
very nice, very classic, very iconic. Jordan did so much on the court, off the court with this shoe on. Never going to be another one like it. Hey, guys, another shoe that Jordan played in when he was with the Wizards. Hint, hint, hint. The Air Jordan 11, cool gray. I mean, it's an Air Jordan 11, nice gray palette, nice white laces. What else is there to say? I mean, beautiful shoe, beautiful colorway, history. I think this was also a Gentry Humphrey inspired shoe, but again, I'm not clear on that 100%. Glad to have it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shoe. Call the Air Jordan 11 Space Jam. Call the Air Jordan 11 Away Concords. Either way, call an Air Jordan 11 PE. This is the shoe, man. The 45 on the back with the blue uh, Concord right here, man. I really don't have the words to kind of describe how I feel about this shoe. This is a amazing, beautiful shoe. I believe it was released in 2006, 2011 or 14. I don't know why those dates are kind of tripping me up. And then again in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. But man, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And lastly for the 11s, of course, the Air Jordan playoffs. This one is one of those ones, man. Words escape me for how good this shoe is. Beautiful red on the bottom, beautiful red jump, man. Great leather, great patent leather. Just, man. I mean, what, what else can I say about these 11s that hasn't already been said, to be honest with you? Moving on, we have the Air Jordan 12 playoffs. I mean, this was a beautiful shoe. I love the way the material looks and feels on this shoe. They did this one really right. Yeah, definitely got my words out of these so far. The 12s are such a great shoe. I mean, and I know a lot of people pretty much only like the OG colorways in them. Like the playoffs, the taxis, the flu games. And I, I need all those shoes. And unfortunately, I don't have but just this one. But man, this is a wonderful shoe. Beautiful playoff inspired shoe. And MJ did a lot of work in these 12s. Another two pack, we got the black and crushed velvet and the white and crushed velvet. I think it's crushed velvet. Either way, you got the Alma Manier Air Jordan 12. These are women's exclusive shoes. And man, uh, people really did this one dirty at first because the suede, it does have that kind of uh, dry, ashy kind of colorway, but I think it fits the overall theme and motif of the shoe. I actually like how dusty the material looks on here when you compare it to the nappy hair suede. It's a great shoe. Again, one of those ones I think I got my use out of so far, so good. And then of course, in contrast, you have the white leather of the white and crushed velvet pair. Super nice. I mean, this one had its issues with its QC with some of the bleeding on some pairs. I think we have a pretty good pair. This one came directly from Ama Meniere. This one was a gift from someone who has a tie with Ama Meniere. So thank you to, you know, you know who you are. But all that being said, two great shoes and two great colorways from the brand, Ama Meniere. Salute to them. A release from the Atlanta boys. You've got the Air Jordan 12 East Side Golf. So much storytelling in this shoe. And I'm so kind of disappointed in myself that I didn't have the opportunity and the time to review this shoe. There's so much to talk about. This shoe has a lot of heritage behind it. The guys, Olajuwon, and I forget the other gentleman's name right now. Um, I mean, they just have such a story to tell with this shoe. Basically about getting it out of the mud, that, that splatter of the red Georgia clay, and you're hitting the golf ball. I may go back and do justice to this shoe and do a review on it. I kind of owe it to myself and the boys up there in Atlanta for doing good work on this shoe. Air Jordan 13, Soulfly. Down here in South Florida, I think in the 305, man, Soulfly is a shop owned by uh, MJ's brother-in-law and they have a couple of collabs. This was the most recent collab to come out. The Celestine Blue and Sail kind of colorway. This is meant to uh, kind of simulate a yacht over the open water. You know, MJ's a big baller, man. So he, he talks yacht talk. I don't know how to speak that language. But in any event, this shoe kind of covers that. I mean, this Celestine Blue is such a great shade of blue. Underlaid with this gray colorway and over the top of that sail kind of scratchy material. Nice, nice, nice. Here I have the 2010 version because my 2020 version kind of disappeared. I don't know. The 2010 version of the Air Jordan 13 Flint. Great, iconic, classic shoe. I wish I could kind of trade this one or kind of get rid of it to get the 2020 version. The 2010 version does not have that 3M reflective upper like most of the new 13s have especially that 2020 version of the same shoe. I'm gonna have to try to get that some kind of way. Right now it's not high on the resale market, so I may have to bite the bullet. But I think this one's gonna start coming apart on me pretty soon here. The Air Jordan 13 Chicago, or AKA Cherry, whatever you wanna call it. This beautiful Jordan 13, one of the original Jordan 13 colorways. MJ played in it, Chicago, enough said, man. Jordan 13 Cherry, AKA Chicago. Also in contention for one of my favorite shoes of all time, the Air Jordan 13 He Got Game. Man, man, I did a short series called Soul Stories. I talked about how important this shoe was to me. Not to mention just the black and white and red kind of color scheme, but this shoe has major, major, major nostalgic versions. Why I love this shoe so much. If you have time, you can go check it out on my channel. A Soul Story, he got game, but other than that, 
fantastic fire shoot. The recently released Air Jordan 13 playoffs, man. What else can be said about this? Again, iconic, classic playoffs. This, that, bing, bang, boom. You know, you've seen one, you've seen them all. Again, people kind of disrespect the uh, OGs. I'm okay with that. Easier for me to cop at retail when I want them, when I need them. And this one is here in the collection, safe and sound. Unfortunately, my only Air Jordan 14, but I think one of the best probably of all time. And again, in the running, top five favorite shoe of all time, the Air Jordan 14 Black Toe. This one gives me really heavy Concord vibes. Got that kind of tuxedo look to it. It's fast and sleek. You can wear it with a lot of different kind of shoes. And I know a lot of people don't talk about the 14, but this is the one to me. This one has a smooth upper compared to the ribbed upper. But if I just had this shoe, maybe the Laney's and the Last Shot 14s, I can call myself pretty happy with just my 14 collection. The Air Jordan 1 Low EX in that black colorway. Say what you want about this particular shoe. I think you should have positive things to say about this particular shoe, but it is nice. This shoe looks like a collab shoe to me. And not that that should matter, but I think Jordan Brand did a really good job on this shoe and making it have some kind of special appeal by being an in-house design. A cream lace swap was all I needed to really make this shoe a definite go. And that is actually it for my Air Jordan collection. I'm gonna give you guys a quick look at my non-Jordan pickups. Let's check them out real quick. Kinda Jordan-ish, this is the Nike Airship. He actually did wear the airship before Jordan 1 came out. And of course they had that uh, black and red, the actual band colorway. But here you have a team orange and you have a pine green. Both of these were boutique neighborhood exclusives. And I don't, don't think either one of these actually dropped on a sneaker set. Air Jordan 1 KO in a storm blue colorway. I really am digging a KO. Of course, the KO means knockoff. Nike wants to get ahead of the competition, creating knockoff shoes. So they decided to go ahead and make their own knockoffs in house. This is the result. Kind of airshipy, kind of Jordan 1-ish with the uh, canvas material. Got the storm blue colorway. I really do wish I had the Chicago colorway as well as some other ones. I think more of these are gonna be coming in the future. I'm looking forward to it for sure. Lastly, for anything with Jordan attached to the titles, my Air Jordan 1 center cords. These are really casual shoes. I really love these shoes. I mean, this is like a yacht shoe. Like when I go on boats, I take this shoe with me. When I go out casually, I got this colorway. And I think I got married. I had an all pink suit off on the beach when I was in uh, St. Lucia, man. Beautiful beach wedding. I had a pink tuxedo. I think I actually wore this on the beach too. Very, very nice, man. I just like these casual shoes. And lastly, the next silhouette I am working on are Air Max 1s. I actually love Air Max 1s. Again, if you guys don't know, I'm in Florida. It's hot all the time, so I need a low kind of shoe that I can wear casually. And Air Max 1 definitely fits the bill for both style and looks. This one I think is called like a beetroot colorway. We got the LeBron Liverpool collab. I believe this one is called Crepe. Crepe? I think it's a Crepe colorway. We got the Dirty Denim colorway, one of my favorites that I have so far. The Swiper, the De'Aaron Fox colorway, which I've had for a while, even before I got to Air Maxes as it were. This kind of multicolored, two-tone, different, you know, mismatched shoes really uh, got my attention. I like this one a lot. And last but not least, the Concept Air Max, the Far Out. I definitely was happy to get this shoe. I got the whole box, the whole presentation with, with it. I think Concept did a fantastic job with this entire pack. I definitely want the other ones too. I, uh, I'm gonna try to get those ones as much as I can. And that's it, everybody. This is pretty much the extent of my entire sneaker collection. Again, there's no monetary value to any of this. I mean, what it means, it means to me and me alone. As I definitely hope your collection should mean the same to you. At some point, we're gonna get away from putting monetary value on the things that we collect and start putting how much we actually like things as an actual currency that goes along with that. All that being said, thank you guys. If you made it this far, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hopefully this is worth the subscribe. Hopefully all this work is gonna be worth the like. And if you guys can do both of those, I would be eternally grateful. Thank you all for helping me meet my goals so far in 2023. Until the next one, the next review, I have been Jay Shoe Fanatic and this is my collection. That's dope. Oh, the original cut. There it is. I might like it better than 2020 version.